Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. If you're new to On One Photo Raw 2020, this video is for you. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get your images into On One, how to decide which image you'd like to work on, and then we're going to actually process that image beginning to end. If you're new to my channel, welcome. At the end of this video, I'll tell you a little bit more about myself. Right now, I really want to get into On One Frodo Raw 2020 and teach you how to get going, how to start using it. When you first open On One Photo Raw 2020, you're gonna be open up into this workspace. This is called the Browse Module. And if you look over on the right-hand side, you'll see all the modules are listed here. We're in the Browse module, and inside of the Browse module, you browse your images. You also could edit metadata, you could add keywords. You could also give your images like star ratings, color labels, or give them like a pick, like a heart, like you like it or dislike it. You could do that all here in the Browse module. When you're ready to work on an image, you would go over to the Edit module, and the Edit module has several uh, small sub-modules, let's call them, in it. And we're going to talk about that when we get there. It also has layers. If you're familiar with a uh, program like Photoshop, all that layers and masking you could do in Photoshop, most of it at least you could do in On One Photo Raw 2020. It also allows you to merge panoramas. You could merge HDRs. And it has this focus module as well. Now we're going to start out in the Browse module, and if you're a Lightroom user, you're probably used to importing your images into Lightroom. As a matter of fact, you cannot work on an image in Lightroom unless you import it first. It's a little different with On One. On One, you do not have to import your images into it. You could just navigate to wherever they are on your computer. So over on the left-hand side, they make it easy. They have these icons here, these like quick strike icons. I could jump right to the desktop. I could jump to specific folders. I could jump to my local drives. I could jump to cloud sources like Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, OneDrive, wherever your images may be. Or over here, you could see my local drives are all listed. I have a lot of external hard drives on this computer. I also have the cloud storage listed here. So I could just really find my images very easily. But I know you're asking, what if you have images on your camera, on your camera's memory card, and you want to get them into On One? Well, you can import those. It allows you to do it. Go up to File, Import. And then you could import them off your camera's memory card uh, into anywhere you want to put them on your system and then start working on them in On One. Now, for this demonstration, I have some images already on my computer. They're on one of my external hard drives, and they're in a folder called Erie Basin Marina. It's on this drive right here, Morganti one. I'll just roll that down and there it is right there. And I'll click on it and there they are. So I didn't have to import them or anything. They're right there ready for me to rock and roll. Now, okay, so what do we do next? Well, usually you cull your images next, right? You're gonna go through them and decide which one you want to actually process. Well, as you're looking at this, this is called grid view. And if we look over on the lower left-hand side, you can see all the views are here. And if you want to just look at a single image, that's called detail view. And I could click right here and there's that single image. Now I could then still move through the images by using the arrow keys on my keyboard. So the right arrow key in this case will move through the images uh, one by one. And I just keep hitting that right arrow key and go through the images. Then what I could do is if I like an image, like I like this image, this is one I may want to process. I could go down here at the bottom. And you can see that there's all these different stars. There's also this little black square. If I click on that, that's a color label. So I could give it a color label, or I could give it a heart, that's a like. Or I could give it an X, that's a dislike. Usually the dislikes are the ones that you want, probably delete, you just don't like them for whatever reason. So I could keep going through the images this way, or I could go to another view. Over here, there's another view where it puts the film strip at the bottom. So this is a little, little easier maybe. I could click on them down here. That one's a little overexposed. I think the clouds are gonna be blown out, so I'll give that an X. So I could just keep going through these. Now, the thing you'll notice when you just do it like I did, where I didn't, uh, I just navigated to where they were on my computer and I'm using the arrow key to go through them, they might take a little while to render. And it takes even longer if this film strip isn't at the bottom. So if you're just in detail view, 
it takes a little longer every time I hit that right arrow key. And now it's kind of moving, it's making a layer out of me now, but sometimes it will take a little longer to render. What you could do is you could index the folder. When you index the folder, the on one catalog will then create previews for the images and it will allow it to render much faster. Also, when you do that, you'll be able to search for your images by attribute, meaning if I gave them a heart, I'd be able to search by the heart. If I gave it, let's say, two stars, I could search for two stars and so on. So what you could do to index the folder is very easy. Right where it says folders at the top, click on plus. Then you'll have, in my case, Mac Finder comes up. If you're using a Windows computer, of course, Windows File Explorer will pop up. I just need to navigate to that hard drive and navigate to that folder and then click open. And it's telling me that it's going to create previews and it's going to just make everything go much faster. And it's what size? Minimal, medium, or standard size? I'll do standard size and click OK. And now it's going to bring that folder up here in catalog folders. Now it's actually not moving the images anywhere. They're still on that hard drive in the exact same place. But in on one now, I could access them up here. And now they're cataloged. So it'll be much quicker to navigate through the images using, let's say, the right arrow key. Also, as I mentioned, you'll be able to search for them, and we'll do that in a moment. Now, I'm going to go back to this film strip view, and let's just continue going through these images uh, very quickly. I have a lot with a boat in them. I, that one's okay, I guess. That one's okay. I kind of like that one. So I'm going to give this one a heart, all right? And um, I kind of like that last one, too. So I'll give, even though that's kind of a little crooked, but I'll give that one a heart as well. So I have a number of these that have hearts, all right? That's the way I decided to cull them. I have a couple that have X's to at least one that has an X. Now I want to just look at the ones that I favorited. To do that, we go over here to filters. I'll turn this on by clicking right there. And I just want to look at the ones I liked. I'll click there. And there they are, the three I liked. Just like that. So very, very simple. So let's decide I want to work on one of these. Let's pick this one because it's crooked and I could show you how to straighten it as well. So I want to work on this one. Now we need to go to the edit module. To do that, simply go over on the right hand side and right where it says edit, click on edit. And then it will bring the image over into the edit module. Now I did mention the edit module consists of several different subsections and they're right here. We're in the develop module. There's also an effects module, a portrait module, and local. Local is local adjustments. That's like a brush tool or a graduated filter tool. You could all, all that is right there. So we have all these different sub modules inside of the edit module. Now, as I mentioned, as I look at the image, I need to straighten it. Now over on the left hand side, when we're in the edit module, we have a lot of different tools. And you can see one of the tools is the crop tool. So we're going to click on that. And there's a number of different ways I could go about um, straightening this. It has a level tool. I could click and activate the level tool and my cursor turns into that. And if you have a distinctive like horizontal line or vertical line in the image, this is where you would, where you would use the level tool. Like in a case of a landscape photo, it would usually be a distinctive horizontal line. And that's what you would use uh, to level the image. Just draw along the horizon and it will automatically straighten the image. If you have a very distinctive and precise vertical, you could do that like in a cityscape. Now in this case, I used a really wide angle lens and it distorted the building. It's leaning in. So that really isn't a good example to use. So I'm not going to use the level tool. Instead, I'm just going to do it by eye. If I just come off the image to the right, you can see how the cursor turns into that circular arrow. Click with the left mouse button. When I click with the left mouse button, this tight grid appears, and this will help me straighten the image. So I'm kind of looking, just eyeballing it, and that looks pretty straight right there. And when I'm ready, I'm just going to click Apply to apply the crop. And there we are, as simple as that. Now, we're in the Develop sub-module of the Edit module. Typically, I call these panels. I don't think that's... Um, what on one calls them. So I call this the browse panel, the edit panel. So inside of the edit panel, I have the develop module, effects module, portrait module, and so on. Anyway, we're in the develop. At the very top, I could click or pick a camera profile. Um, camera profiles often will give you different 
uh, renderings of color and contrast in your image. And you could go through these and see if there's one that you like better than any of the others. Let's just stay with on one standard right now. Now, tone. Do you want to uh, kind of match the way it may have looked in your camera? You would pick AI match and it will give you a rendition that they think it probably looked on the back of your camera. Um, you could see it adjusted these uh, sliders. If you just wanted to do an auto tone adjustment, click AI auto and you can see it did a pretty good job. I really do like their new um, artificial intelligence that is in uh, Photo Raw 2020. I think it really does a nice job. But we're going to go back to manual. See, it's going to zero everything out. And we're, we're going to process this ourselves. Now, I think exposure is good, that first slider. Um, contrast, I like to do a little later. Excuse me, I'm not going to do it right now. But I'm going to, the highlights are a little bright. So I'm going to go to the highlights and I'm just going to bring those down a tad. And the midtones, maybe they're a little muddy. I'll just bring those up just a touch. And I'm going to open up the shadows a little. Now, I just kind of made the image flatter, right? I kind of took the contrast away. Well, now I start to come in and I re-apply uh, contrast. And the way I start to do it is with the whites and blacks slider. I'll go to the whites. And what I like to do is hold the J key in. Hold the J key in when you adjust the white. And you'll notice as I turn it up, 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 all of a sudden we're getting some red overlay in the clouds. That means we're starting to clip the highlights. When you're clipping the highlights, that means there's no detail there at all. We prefer usually to have detail throughout our image from the darkest darks to the lightest lights. So the, what you do is just keep holding in that J key and keep backing off that whites until all that red is gone. So that would be a good white point in most cases, not always, but in most cases. Now again, I'll hold that J key in. I'll do the same thing for blacks and I'll move it to the left. Now this time you'll see blue come on the screen. That means we're clipping the, the shadows. When you're clipping the shadows, again, you're obliterating any detail. And typically we don't want to obliterate detail, especially if you're printing this, that would mean you just get a bunch of black ink laid down. In the case of the whites, if you're um, clipping your highlights, you wouldn't have any ink laid down. So. I'm going to move it now. Personally, I like to clip the shadows a little bit. I think it just adds a little more tonal depth to my image and adds a little more contrast. So I like that. Now, now I'll jump up to contrast and I'll just kind of just to do this to, to taste. So I'm just going to move that up slightly. So there, now we have this color section. Uh, the white balance looks good, but if it didn't, there's several different ways you could go about doing it. You could just come in here and do like over, like um, put your cursor over each of these um, different types of white balance that are available in your camera. And by the way, if you're shooting a JPEG, many of these won't be there. So this is a raw file. And you can see as I hover over these, it's giving me the white balance rendering for that uh, color temperature. I'm going to stay with that shot. I also could just uh, click on this eyedropper here and go to something in the image that shouldn't have any color in it in real life, like a white cloud. And that will give you a white balance also. Or I could just go right here and I could just uh, put in the, uh, the actual Kelvin t uh, temperature that I think I'm using. Most often you would use that in a studio situation uh, when you know you're using a specific color temperature light. Let's say that light is 5,500 Kelvin then you would know to come in here and move this to 5,500. That's when you would do that. Now in this case, I'm just gonna go back to as shot cause I kinda like that. Um, also, if you uh, want to add or adjust vibrance and or saturation, you do these with these two sliders. Um, saturation is a little more heavy handed than vibrance. Saturation will increase the saturation or decrease the saturation of every single pixel in the image equally. So if I move it to the right, if I have a color like that green down here is already saturated, if I keep moving it, it's going to oversaturate it. The blue's oversaturated and so on. If I go to the left, it's going to take all the color out of every single pixel. So I have a black and white image. If you want to reset any of these sliders to their default position, just double click on the name. So I double click on saturation and it's reset. 
Vibrance is a little more nuanced than saturation. It will bring colors to saturation, but will tend to not oversaturate anything. So that would be a better choice um, most often. And it's also a better choice if you have a person with a uh, skin or a person in the image, so it doesn't oversaturate their skin tones. So you can move it to the right, and what it does is basically reds and pinks, it doesn't saturate as much. And if you bring it down, you can see there's still, all the way down, there's still a little color in the image. So it's not as heavy handed as saturation. Also, if you are doing a portrait, you could use, reduce the vibrance on the skin further by clicking right there. So I'm just gonna bring saturation up a little bit. And then if you found when you started adjusting color, if your whites started to look a little yellow or your shadows were looking a little purple or something like that, you could move this to kind of bring that white in this case or black back and i don't need to do that here now this is detail this is sharpening and noise reduction now typically what you'd like to do is zoom in when you're working on any of these so i'm going to zoom into this building up here in the distance and then i could look and there really isn't a lot of noise in this image and i like to do the noise first so i would move the luminance noise reduction slider usually up to like an even number that's in the tens, meaning 20, 30, 40, 50, something like that. So I'll move it to 40. This is just the way I do it. And then I'll look at it and I go, well, that took away the noise. So I'll move it back down to 30. And you're kind of walking a fine line here. If you add too much noise reduction, you're going to soften the image. You're going to take away detail and sharpening. If you add not enough, you're going to have that noise there. So you kind of want to add just enough. So even at 30, it took away all the noise. So I'll go back down to 20. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of zeroing in to a point. So 30 took all the noise away. Um, even at 20, all the noise is, is gone. So I'll go down to 10. And there's a tiny bit of noise at 10. And I doubt you could even see it in the video. So I'm going to move this up to like 15. So I just kind of split the difference and keep kind of uh, going down uh, until I feel that it did a good job. Now, if it did soften the image a little too much, with the detail slider, you could move that and kind of bring back some of the detail. In this case, we don't have to. If you have color noise, and usually that's red, green, or blue, like little dots, little pixels of color, you would move this to the right. And surprisingly, I don't have any here, so I don't need to worry about that. Once I do noise reduction, then I'll go to uh, sharpening. And really, there's really not a lot of detail in this image. But, and similarly, I do this the same way. I'll bring it up to like a whole number 40. And what often happens with sharpening is you could be sharpening the noise and you want to make sure you don't do that. So bring it up to an amount that it's not enhancing the noise. And if it is, back it off. And threshold two, it's kind of a, a just a dance between these two sliders to get it so that it looks nice and sharp but not noisy, and that's all you need to do with those. And if you have any hot pixels on your sensor, that's basically a dead pixel where the pixel is just showing like a white dot. You can click on that, and that will hopefully get rid of it. And sometimes it takes a second to render, but we'll let that go. Next is lens corrections. It found the lens. It's a Nikon 24 to 70 lens. If it doesn't, you could drill down, go to the manufacturer of the lens, and then go to the lens itself right here. And you could do all that right there. Um, there's also manual. So if I want to manually come in and try to adjust um, any lens distortions, uh, here I could do that. Uh, that pin cushioning or barrel distortion, you could do that. I never do that. It usually works fine. Now, this building is leaning, so I'm going to go to the Transform tool here, and you can see this vertical. If I take this and I move it, you can see I could straighten out that building. And this, because it was a wide-angle lens, it kind of distorted everything. So I kind of got that fixed. Super easy. It keystoned the image a little bit at the bottom. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to go to um, the Crop tool again. And you can see how we have these blank pixels over here and a tiny bit over there. And I'm just going to pull up from the bottom until all those are gone. Just like that. And that's even better. The rule of thirds line, the horizon's right on, right around the rule of thirds line. So that's even, even a better crop. So we'll click apply. 
So we're getting there, we're getting there. So we're done in the develop module. Now we could go over to the effects module and now we could do some really cool effects to this image. Um, if you click add filter, you could see that there's a number of different filters available. And the first filter I think I wanna try is um, the color uh, enhancer filter. I'll go to color enhancer and here I could target specific colors in the image. For example, down here where it says color range, if I go, you can see these different color swatches. If I click on the blue, this will only affect the blues in the image and I could change the hue of the blue or I could add more saturation and look at the blue sky. If I go to the right, you see how it's affecting the saturation of the blue sky. So I'm gonna make it a tiny bit more saturated or I could affect and or I could affect the brightness. I'm gonna bring the brightness of the blue sky down. So I'm gonna make the blue sky a little darker and then let's say if I go to um, green and I want to brighten up green a little bit, I'll go to brightness and it will bring up green a little more down in here. And you know, that's really all I wanted to do. Darken the blue sky, make the greens a little bit brighter. And I think that looks pretty good right there. Um, the other filter I really like, and it's probably my favorite filter that's in any program anywhere and that is dynamic contrast. Dynamic contrast is a tremendous filter. Now you can see how it really sharpened the image, probably a little bit too much, but you have a lot of control here. As you'll find with many of the filters and with many of the uh, tools that are in the develop module, we have some presets going along the top. And if I click on natural, that's what it defaulted to. But if I go to next to that, there's surreal. And you can see it gives it kind of a real HDR look. Go to soft, it gives it a soft look. The drop down might have some more, and some it will. Texture enhancer, a grunge contrast, right? But what I like to do is I like to go to natural and work off that. And often then I find like I'll bring small down, the medium up. It depends. Every image is different. If I find that it's just uh, too strong of an effect, I could go to the opacity slider and bring this down. If it's down to zero, it's as though the effect isn't even being used. So there's off and on. So you could see if it's at 100, then it's at 100%. There's off and on. So kind of like this one. You also could, uh, sometimes when you add dynamic contrast, you affect the tone maybe adversely. So you could come in here and like adjust tone as well instead of going back to the develop module you could do that here and to kind of wrap this up quick i would encourage you though to just experiment with all these different filters and also i have videos where i've actually gone over every single filter that is in on one photo raw some of the older versions on one photo raw but they still work very similarly in the same way but i will um actually before i do this i just want to make one more point you'll see right here this little mask if I only wanted to apply this, let's say, to the buildings and nowhere else, I would click this little mask and then I have full control to paint the effect in anywhere I want, remove it wherever I want. I could use a luminosity mask so it's only being applied to specific tones in the image. And you get that with all the filters, just the ability to use these masks. And we'll do that in future videos. It's really a super powerful tool and something that you should take advantage of. But I kind of want to wrap this up, so I'm going to go to a vignette, and I want to add a dark vignette. If I move brightness to left, it's dark. If I move it to the right, it's light. Also, we have, again, those presets at the top. There's a subtle vignette, a strong vi vignette. Big Softy is a very popular vignette. Um, edges, and so on. I'm just going to go to strong, but then I'm gonna, going to adjust it off that. I'm just going to make it less strong by moving brightness to the right. So that's my process to image. Um, it just easily did. There's before, and I hit the backslash key, by the way, to show you that. There's before, and there's after. Before, after, and I did that. It really, I could have done that in seconds if I wasn't talking so much. Now I want, <laughs> I want to export it. I'll click over here, and the export dialog comes up, and I could resize the image. And let's say I want to resize it to the long edge is 2048, I want 72 pixels per inch. Um, I, how do I, what algorithm do I want to use to resize it? I'm just going to use the general on one resize. You could add a watermark. You could add some sharpening, export sharpening. I'm not going to do that. 
You could do tiling. Tiling is often done if you're doing specific prints uh, where you're going to um, have a number of uh, a really big print and you're going to have individual smaller pieces of paper comprise that big print. Gallery wrap, if you're doing a uh, canvas and you're going to wrap it around a frame, you could do all that there. We're going to export a JPEG. You also could uh, do a Photoshop file, a TIFF or a PNG. We'll go with a JPEG. I want, let's go with maximum quality, even though I typically keep that around 7580, but we'll go with that. And where do I want to save it? Well, I'll click choose and I'm going to save it to my desktop. And um, if there's one, uh, an image there with the same name, I'm going to prevent overwrite. And I am going to rename the image, and I'm just going to call it uh, Erie Basin Marina, because that's what it is. And then down here, where it says Export, click Export. And it will do it in the background. You can see there's a little progress bar right here. And um, one thing that I found in that... Um, kind of, um, I guess my complaint, it does take a little while to export an image. Uh, it's, it's relatively slow. That's one thing I wish they would speed up. So uh, when it is done exporting, it will be on my desktop. And there it is right there. Here you be some basinmarina.jpg. I'll double click on that. And there's our exported image. So so you see, it's really super easy to use On One Photo Raw 2020. Now in this description below this video, I'll have links to their website. You could check it out. I am an On One affiliate. And um, there'll also be a link to my code of ethics statement so you can find out about what it means when I'm an affiliate for a company. Again, if you're new to my channel, uh, my name is Anthony Morganti. I've been teaching photography for maybe about uh, seven, eight years. I think my YouTube channel is maybe about five or six years old. And I've done literally probably at least a hundred videos on, on one in past product. So you could check all those out. If you'd like me to do a future video on a specific topic concerning anything in on one photo raw 2020, leave it a uh, comment below and I'll see if I could do it. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and make sure you click on that little bell so you get updates. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you know of anyone that would benefit from watching this video, please share it. And finally, why don't you follow me on Instagram? I am at Anthony Morganti on Instagram, and I'll have a link for that in the description below this video as well. Also, if you're interested in the camera I used to capture these images and the settings and such, I'll have that listed in the description below the video as well. As always, thank you for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.